All right, this is a um, problem where we're going to figure out how to find the percentage that's produced in a reaction. And in this problem here, it's a little different from normal percent yields where most of the time you're given actual amount, the actual amount that's produced in like a, you know, a lab, maybe a lab someone did, a reaction someone did, and the actual amount they created. And you compare that to the theoretical amount that you calculate. In this case, they, they give you the percentage and you got to use that to find um, the amount that's expected to be produced in the reaction. So we have to work with, with the uh, main equation. Now, for all these types of problems, the main equation you have to know is uh, percent. Let me fix that. The percent is equal to uh, the actual divided by the theoretical. times 100. And that gives you, obviously, a percentage. So they, they say here, uh, what mass of PCL5, ba again, based on this reaction here, is expected from the reaction of 73.7 grams of PCL3 with excess chlorine? Now, like all these problems, you, you almost always you have to calculate the theoretical. So in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to take 73.7 grams we're going to calculate the theoretical that you could produce. So we're going to have to calculate the theoretical amount of PCL5 that you could that you could produce. And then we're going to use that to find the answer here. And what we're going to do is we're going to take that answer that we calculate in a second and multiply it times this percentage. That when we do that, when we multiply it by this percentage, which is given here, you know, you plug that in here for this equation, you are actually calculating the actual. So doing this like roundabout way, you can figure out what would actually be produced if this is the percentage you're going off. So let me um, let me just summarize this formula here up here so I have to remember it. Actual over theoretical times 100, and we'll start calculating. So again, uh, the first thing we'll do is take this uh, mass they give me, so 73.7 grams, and I got to figure out um, again the theoretical. And this is PCL3. So they give us grams. And actuals and theoreticals are always in grams. So I have to find this amount in grams. So I'm going from grams to grams. Now you can't just do that straight up. You can't just do that one times one conversion factor. There's no conversion factor that you can multiply this number by that will give you the grams amount in this. You have to go right to moles. You have to go from, first we're going to go from grams of uh, PCL3 to moles of PCL3. That's the first thing you want to do. Again, moles are always a stepping stone. And uh, again, whenever you're doing these conversion factors, the one you want to get rid of always goes on the bottom, unknown always goes on top. In this case, we're going to use a molar mass, so it's per every one mole. And we got to find the mass of PCL3. We'll just use a periodic table for that. The mass of one phosphorus plus three chlorines comes out to 137.32. So when you do this calculation, you get uh, 0 0.537, round it up. And now that's moles of PCL3. All right, so we got our moles of PCL3. And you know, you could, you could do this as one long step. But I'm just doing this like, just like in small, several small steps. Like there's, you could do, you could set up uh, going from grams to moles to moles to grams, which is essentially what I'm doing in like one long step, but I'm just doing several small steps. Either way, it's fine. So now I gotta go from five, uh, or 0 0.537 moles of PCL3. My next step is to go to moles of this product here, PCL5. And again, I want to get rid of, rid of this given here, so I got to divide by moles of PCL3. So this is a mole ratio. 
small ratios you get from the equation itself. This is a great one, well, an easy one, because these are all one. The coefficients are all one here. So it's one to one to one. It's already balanced. So it's a one to one ratio here, so it's just 0 0.537 moles of PCl5. So my last step now is to take this uh, 0 0.5 three, seven moles of PCL5 and for two grams of PCL5. Again, I'm going to grams of PCL5 and I want to divide by mole, one mole of PCL5. So to find the grams, I'm going to multiply by here. It's just the uh, mass of PCL5. That's it. So you get your periodic table and you find the mass. Um, this guy is a little bigger than PCL3. And when you do this calculation, it comes out to 111.8. Uh, this is in grams of PCl5. And we're not done yet. This is not our final answer here. We have to find uh, the mass expected. The mass of PCl5 expected. So we're actually trying to calculate the actual. This is the theoretical part we just calculated. And we're actually trying to work backwards and figure out the actual based on the percentage they gave us. So you, again, what we're going to do now is take this number we just, we just calculated. Again, this is the theoretical. We calculate all this work was done to find the theoretical. And we're going to multiply this by this percentage. Now, of course, when you multiply by a percentage, um, you have to multiply it by the decimal. So we're taking this guy here times 0 0.832. That, that's, in effect, what we're doing. And let me make some room here. Um, that can squeeze this in here. So we're just taking. 111.8 multiplied by 0 0.832. Again, that's just the decimal of 83.2%. And that gives you um, 93.02. And this is technically probably grams. So what this tells you here, this is the actual amount that you will create if you do this reaction. That's what it tells you. So here's your actual, here's your theoretical, and when you divide this number by this number, just like up here, this would be the actual, so 93.02, divide by 111.8, you would get the percentage they gave us here. So we are, again, like I said, most problems, they give you the uh, actual, you figure out the theoretical, and then you have to calculate the percentage. In this case, it's a little different. But it's still not that bad. You just have to know what to do with the percentage. You have to be familiar with this formula with these type of problems. So this is the final answer.